All right, everyone, welcome back to the start of attack period two here in Lanzareth Ridge, Battle of the Bulge from Danvers and Games. This is game number four in the Valiant Defense series designed by David Thompson. Uh, art is by Nils Johansson and it's beautiful. I didn't mention that in the first video, but it's absolutely beautiful and creates a very nice thematic touch. Really helps you feel like you're in the battle in there. Um, part one of this video series looked at attack turn number one. You can watch that to see how I fared. I felt like I did pretty good. Did not lose any defenders, did not lose any morale. Used up quite a bit of ammo and I wish I hadn't used as much because I still have four attack rounds coming. But I also got a radio intelligence which gives me an extra victory point at the end of the game. I need to go back to focusing on those a little bit. Um, so yeah, feel pretty good. Only had one booby trap blow up. That was on track number three. Can't put that back, but I, I feel like I did okay. One of the things that's going to start to happen a lot more in attack round two is you're going to have mortars show up. I believe they show up in number two. Maybe they do in number three. But you're also going to have the Falsham Jaeger and the attackers start attacking track, uh, the hexagonal one track and the triangular one track on the far right uh, flank. This one, this one's on the left flank. So you're going to see that a little bit more. So you got to be a little more prepared. I did move these guys down here to be able to pick these guys off as they move up. I've got to stay on top of that because that can snowball really quickly. So I got to, uh, got to be wise about that. All right, let's go ahead. And without further ado, let's start round two. All right. Falsham Jaeger submachine gun is going to get placed on number one right here. So right off the bat, they're attacking now the left flank. Here we're gonna do a rifleman and we're gonna roll, place them on one to six. Let's grab my rifleman. We're gonna place them on number three. That moves that rifleman up, that rifleman up. And then the third and final card, we're gonna place a leader on brown one, which is going to destroy that fence token, which that's okay. When a leader's on the board, and there's units up nearby, it is, it's going to take that out. So that's our three cards. I'm going to take those off to the side. Now I'm going to start my actions. Uh, really want to do a little bit of work here. Trying to get some of these guys taken advantage or taken out. All right. So got to do something here, definitely. I'm going to go ahead and do... Uh, this guy who has a D8, he's also going to be inspired by Dustman. So he'll roll 2D8, and he's going to attack the first rifleman in position 4. Well, now I lost an 8-sider. I'll have to find that. So I failed. Wow. That is one thing I think last game I, I had quite a few misses, and in this game I'm already starting out with a miss. So that's not good. We'll just have to adjust. We'll just have to deal with it. So we're going to go ahead and do Adams. He's going to go ahead and try to pop that guy 2d8. He got a five, so that kills that rifleman. Got to do a little... I'm going to move Balk into this, sorry, into this position. So a movement doesn't exhaust. Got to remember that. I'm going to move Fort into the radio position because I ultimately want him to be able to get into the radio intelligence. And let's see, I think I'm going to go ahead with Kali, Khalil, uh, Khalil, sorry, over here on the far right. He's got a D8. He's inspired by Redmond. So I'm going to go ahead and roll 2D8, shooting that rifleman there and eating a five. I failed. All right, those are my actions. Not a great turn. MG42C. So that one is in position. That's one we didn't take out. Wish that we would have. He's going to attack number six, so he's going to attack the two guys there. First, Redmond with a four. He's fine. Khalif with a, th with a five. Rolled a three. Yeah, they're okay. So hey, I didn't get hurt by that. Very, very good. We're going to place a rifleman on the one triangle spot. I'm just going to push these guys up. Now, if one more gets there, I'm probably in a little bit of trouble. 
So let's hope, and of course that happens. It's just the way it is. So a submachine gunner gets put there. So I'm in a little bit of trouble, although I do have a booby trap. I just need to be very careful how this next round works out. So that's my three attack cards for this round. We'll discard those. I need to find that D8 here in a moment. Let's go ahead and take get my action discs, retrieve them. Four and five. All right, first thing, Fort is going to do a radio token. Doesn't exhaust him. He's going to place one radio intelligence token there. Once again, trying to get some victory points with that. Um, dang it. Really need to do something over here. And I think I, I almost have no other choice. So I'm going to go ahead and flip Milosevic over, the machine gunner, and I'm going to use some of his machine gun power. Backed up by Slape, inspiring him. That's the M1919, so that's the far right one. I'm ultimately going to discard three uh, single discards of ammunition tokens. So I'm going to move those over here to, show, so, to save myself. I'm going to discard the first one to get a D10 plus a D10 from Slape, who is inspiring him, has a red banner so he can inspire any squad. I'm going to go ahead and fire at this submachine gunner down here on this blue track because I can, uh, I can hit that, and I missed. Wow. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again. Same spot. I rolled a 10, so that takes him out. Yikes. Really bad luck here today, I feel. Um, I think he's going to go ahead and fire on this rifleman, needing a five. Four in the combat position, plus one for the range. Got an eight, so he gets eliminated. And that was for my third and final uh, ammunition token. So I have three other actions to do. Okay, man. So I think I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to, Redmond is going to go ahead and exhaust to attack. He's got a D8. He's going to attack the four position. Missed. Wow. Um, man. That just stinks, huh? Well, I got to do some attacking over here because they're kind of building up. So I'm going to flip McConnell. He's just going to get a D8. He's not uh, inspired by anyone. He's going to fire at that rifleman. Got a six, removes him. That's that's good. My final action, I'm going to go ahead and assist to uncover Krieger, who is our best attacker in that position just to get him ready for the future. So that's all five of my actions. Back to the assault deck. Our first mortar card comes out. So a mortar is going to attack a specific identified position. This one is the round two. So that's up here where Fort and the radio intelligence Jeep are. So that's not opportune at this point. We're going to roll a six versus their defense factor and their valor rating. The radio truck has a three, I rolled a five, it gets damaged. So it gets flipped over. Now, what does that mean? When it's flipped over and I try to do the radio intelligence action, I have to discard three radio tokens, roll 3d6, and I have to roll a six now rather than a five and a six. So it doesn't totally make it impossible, but it makes it a lot harder. So then Fort is going to be attacked Roll to one, he's okay, he doesn't get disrupted. That's that's good. Next card, we're gonna place a leader on track number five. Track number five is here. That's gonna, and I grabbed a grenadier. It's a leader. That removes the fence token because a leader's on the track. And I may be doing that wrong, but so if I make a mistake, please correct me. We're gonna place a leader on the six track. So that's the same track, they just move 
this way. So I need to kind of clean these guys up just a little bit. We made it through those three cards. Gather up our action tokens. Three and five. Okay. Jeez. What do I want to do? That M2 is looking awful juicy right now with all those targets. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to flip James over. And he's going to be inspired by Balk. So I'm going to take three tokens and I'm going to do adjust fire actions. So I'm going to get, I'm going to get, and I'm going to do them individually. So I'm going to discard just one because I get one die for the ammo token. And then I get an extra die because he's supported uh, and inspired by Balk, uh, who's in his same combat position. So I'm going to target, I'm going to go ahead and target First, I'm going to target this five. I rolled an eight and 11, so I got that rifleman. Discard the next token. I'm going to target this rifleman. That'll make that a five. Four for the position, plus one for the range modifier. So I rolled a six. That's a six right on the corner. Sorry. Kind of. So he gets removed. That's, that's good because that really gives me some breathing room over there. Um, then I'm going to take a pot shot. I'm going to go at this uh, MG42. So I'm going to need an eight or higher. And I got sixes. Dang it. I thought those were nines for a second. So I discarded that final ammo token and I missed, which is just par for the course, I feel like. Um... I think I'm going to move Gaki over here because he wants to recover some of those guys. I'm going to go ahead and do a radio action with Fort. Place another radio token there. So he has two. And I've got two actions remaining and I really need to kind of clear off just some of these defenders. They're just get, starting to get in my face a little bit and I don't like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do a D8 here. Now, why would I do that? Well, I'm doing that because next round I wanted to recover him. Maybe that's why I'm doing it. That's why I'm doing it. So we got a D8, a single D8, and he's just going to fire at this rifleman, which is a pretty hard shot. I need an eight-sider. Missed with a two. So with my final... Um, okay, we're not really even halfway through, which isn't a good thing. I'm going to go ahead and do this guy with a D8. He's not an assist guy, no. So I'm going to turn him over, exhaust. He's going to fire at that rifleman and misses. He needed a five. Wow, I missed, uh, what, three attacks this turn? Not a good thing. All right, let's go back to the assault deck. We're going to do a rifleman, roll a six-sider. So he goes in position number one, which is right here. Put him there. The next card is a grenadier in number one. So that submachine gunner, those are starting to get a little bit scary. And then we've got an MG42, place or activate A. We've removed A, so now A, hexagonal, gets uh, put back into position, but doesn't get to fire. That's why you remove those machine guns. It's worth the risk, but it's a risk reward because it's always a hard shot. Never an easy shot. All right, so I've got my, wait, I'm missing there we go. Okay, first action, I'm gonna go ahead and do Balk, who's gonna do a command action to recover James, Francher, and Milosevic. Boom. So they are ready to go. They can act. The M2 still has some ammo loaded, but I'm going to hold off. The M1919 still has some ammo loaded, but I'm going to hold off. So then what did I want to do? Why did I do that? I did it because I wanted to get them ready 
to kind of fight next turn. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, Gaki is going to assist and try to bring over Khalil. Not going to get many attacks this turn, which isn't a good thing. I'm going to go ahead and do another radio token this turn. So now I have three. I could do it, but I'm going to wait till he has four because that'll give me an extra die. I think you can do up to four, can't you? Hold on a second. Yeah, I don't think you can have a... Yeah, I'm going to try to get four just to help myself out a little bit. All right, we're going to go ahead and do Krieger. Krieger is going to attack this rifleman. So he has 2d8. Wherever my other eight-sider is. Needing a four. He rolled an eight. So that rifleman gets removed. Um, Preston, I feel like before they get disrupted or somehow get killed, I'm going to go ahead and remove... I'm going to remove one token to get a D, uh, just one D10. They are not supported by anybody. He needs a four. And I got a 10. So I remove that. He's going to throw another one away to get one more D10, needing a five. And I got a five. Hey, sweet. So that kills that Grenadier, really cleans that track up. And I have one action left. I love those machine guns, man. I wish they had un unlimited ammunition. They don't, but I wish they did. Um, I feel like I'm good with those guys. I think I'm going to go ahead. Queen is going to go ahead and recover this guy, McConnell. So that's my final action. We'll go back to the assault deck. MG42A. Hey, I've picked that one off, so now it just comes back on the board. But it doesn't shoot, remember. We're going to do an assault rifleman on one to six. We put him on number one. We rolled a one. So it goes into position seven there and just moves them all up, keeps moving them up. And we're going to do a grenadier. Same thing, roll a six sider. And we're going to put him on track number one. Jeez. Sometimes, sometimes the same numbers and the same tracks keep coming up and that it puts you in jeopardy like this. But I can recover from that. It's just going to be hard. All right, that's the end of that assault phase. Let's go ahead and get our actions back. All five of them. I'm actually going to leave that one on Fort and just throw another radio token on him. So that's his action. Remember, it doesn't exhaust him, which is a good thing with the way that works. It just it doesn't exhaust him. All right. So what am I going to do? That M2 still has some juice. Let's go ahead and fire that M2. So I'm gonna I'm gonna flip over James. Unfortunately, he's not inspired by anybody. That's a little bit of a bad thing. I'm probably gonna reduce or use all three of these. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just use one or two. So I'm gonna discard one to get 1D12. I'm going to shoot. I'm going to go ahead and shoot at this rifleman in position three, needing a four because of the range uh, modifier, which I missed. I'm going to get rid of another one, and I really want to fire over here at that rifleman, needing a six. Got a nine, so that's good. And the final one, I think I'm going to stop. I need to keep that there. It's scary not having any ammo at the end of the game with those guys. Um, so that's two actions. I still have three actions. This, this is the, this is the part that scares me. So I'm going to go ahead and with McConnell, roll a D eight, needing a three, got a seven. So then I'm going to go ahead, Dustman needing a D eight. He was, he's an inspirer, but he doesn't have anybody inspiring him. Needs a four, got a two. And I need Khalif over there. No, I need to go ahead and I need to do, need to do Khalif with a D8 to go ahead and get that number. No, I'm going to go ahead and fire here. Number three. Got him. 
All right. So I, I bought myself some time, which is which is what I'm trying to do. You're just trying to hold out. So here we put a grenadier on the one triangle, which I just cleaned off one guy on that track. So that's kind of opportune. Here we have a mortar that's going to attack the number three position. Over there, it has a defense of three, a five. It's going to be damaged, which I wasn't planning on using that one this game anyway. And then we're going to place a leader on position number three, which is doesn't have a lot of guys there. All right. So that's all three of those cards. So now back to my actions. And I've only got, I think I've got, I think we've got two more turns to, to do this. Or is it three? Let me, let me count the cards. One, two, three. So we've got three more rounds. We've got to survive somehow. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and exhaust Fort and throw away all four of these radio tokens to roll 46. And I need... I just need one six. And why do I need sixes? Because the truck is damaged. So I only have three six. I'm going to roll three first. I missed with all those. So I didn't get it. My goodness. Hilarious. All right. What's my next action? Well. Not worried about that guy. those guys see and you, you can see I have no ability here to recover anybody that's not it's not a good thing particularly not at this point of the game so I'm actually gonna move Springer down here so move doesn't exhaust him because somebody's gonna have to maybe fight these guys Can I, what have I done wrong that I don't have? Yikes. So I'm going to go ahead and do Slape, who's going to do his command action. So he's going to unexhaust James. He's going to unexhaust the two. He's not going to do James. I don't think that track is in any danger. I'm just going to do these three guys in the adjacent combat position. Then my next actions, I can I can reload. I don't think I need to though. Yeah, let me go ahead and do that. So Milosevic is going to reload the M19 just in case. And then this final action, I don't need to take that shot really don't I feel like I'm gonna move him over here okay next three uh, place a leader on the track number two yikes this is getting getting bad here that's almost on top of me submachine gunner we're gonna roll we rolled track number three it's better than the alternative that fence tokens removed now and we're gonna do a rifleman on one hex hexagon track that's fine okay so we survived that round let's get our actions back need to do some work on that left flank there and I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do that just because I don't have don't have any guys which is a little scary um, man. All right, so we're going to go ahead and roll him. So he has a D8, and he's inspired by Springer, so he has two D8. He's going for that leader. Got a five, so we, we got that. That's good. Where else? I did reload, reload that machine gun, but I'm not sure it matters. Okay, over here, Khalil, Khalil, inspired by Redmond, is going to roll 2d8 and target this rifleman position. He can't target that, but he can target that blue position. 
So 2d8 needing a four, got a five. So I feel much better about that. That rifleman goes away. Um, well, dang it. <laughs> so I have three actions here and I feel like I don't have anything to do just because I've I've either mismanaged things or just haven't done as well as I wanted to do with my management. I think I'm all right, but I definitely think I want to move. No. So I'm going to go ahead and do Gaki and turn over Khalil. Right? Got two actions left. I don't. I don't need to do anything at this point. I don't have anything really that I need to do. Is what I'm saying. So I'm actually going to go ahead and turn over Springer. I don't have any way to revive any of these guys. I'm going to roll a six and try to get that, and I missed. So now this track is completely open. That may end up being a big, big mistake. I can't do anything with that final action that matters. Go ahead and load this machine gun just in case. All right, back to the assault deck. MG42B. Ah, so we put that one out. So you can see taking those out has been good for me because I've avoided, I think, three attacks now. We're going to put a rifleman on track number one, which I can... I can stand that. And then the third and final card for this round is roll in place a sub machine gunner. We're going to do it on number four. Yikes. So this is starting to get bad too. These, these two tracks are very, very bad. And that's unfortunate because I don't really have much opportunity here to, to really help out. Okay, so I get my uh, action tokens back. Okay, he reloaded loaded his gun over there. Not good. All right, so what am I going to do here? All right, so I definitely want Redmond to move over here for next round. And we'll also move James over because I can still shoot these blue guys. So I'm not necessarily as worried about that. And I, th I think I'm going to stop. I, I, that is really weird. I don't have anything to do with these actions, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm done. So let's go to the final three cards. So we pulled an assault for a grenadier. Looking for anything, but okay, that's, a, that's actually fine. A five. So this guy moves up. So that's fine. Here we have place a leader on number four. That's not good because that pushes this guy into this booby trap. I didn't want to lose that booby trap this early, but I did. I've kind of mismanaged some things here. And then we're going to place a rifleman on number one. That doesn't matter. So then we gather our action discs. So at this point, I'm just going to take pot shots with whoever I've got at these machine gun emplacements and just see what I can make happen, right? So first, we're going to do a D8 over here. Nobody has exalt or uh, disruption tokens. So a D8 needing a seven or an eight. We got a six, failed. A D8 needing a seven or an eight. Hey, got a seven, sweet. So that gets removed. Milosevic, oh, I should have rolled two dice. So Milosevic being supported by, gets two dice. So he's gonna fire here, adding one. So I have to get an eight. And you know what? I rolled an eight and a seven. Beautiful. 
So that machine gun is going to come off. That's going to pay big dividends. And then really none of these other matter. I can't really make, because I, I, I can't make a nine over there with Redmond. And those guys already went missing. So yeah, I'm, I'm just going to, Redmond's going to take a pot shot on this leader. It, it doesn't matter. He's a D8. And he missed anyway. All right, so that's the end of the turn. We've gotten through a full two decks. That took about 30 minutes, so much quicker. I also didn't feel like I had to go through the rules as much. So let's go ahead and end this round, going back to the end of the period kind of chart. Decrease morale for anybody that has a disrupted token. No one has disruption, that's perfect. Remove all disrupted tokens. We don't have any. Flip over defenders from their exhausted side. I need to gather my action tokens. So we flip the defenders. And this, this is just getting us ready for that next phase. Takes a little bit. I'm, I'm sorry. I wish I could do it quicker. I could do it quicker if the camera wasn't here because I'm, I'm really doing this one-handed. So I flip all the defenders over. It's not good that we have those two guys damaged. Place all attack counters and radio tokens back in the supply. Remember, I'm going to keep out some of the riflemen. Leader and a submachine gun. Submachine gun. There's another leader. Those grenadiers are pretty nasty. They just do such damage when they do get up in your face. Which potentially is going to happen here because we're very low on ammunition. Okay, so we're going to set these guys back up. You have to place 10 of these out at the start of the round. And remember, you're just trusting me that I'm following the rules here. Two, two, two here. We need one more on this track so we're set up there leave defenders weapon counters and attacker mg42 on the board the only two mg42 we have on the board is a hexagon and a brown we place the 10 rifles out fence tokens go back up i feel like that's the one rule i may be doing wrong and if i'm doing it wrong i'm doing it harder for myself Okay, so we move ammo to the loaded position. So this one holds, so that's fully loaded. So we're gonna have a little bit left over from that. Okay. Bauk, Springer, and Fort go into the log cabin. Thanks guys, didn't do me any good last turn. Ah, they did actually. Okay, now I can redistribute all. Not having that much ammo over there really is going to end up hurting me bad, frankly. Okay, I need that here. I feel like I need another assist guy over here. Khalil needs to go there, as does Redmond. They'll start there. I feel like that's a good setup. The only thing that concerns me is there's nobody in position three. I could spread a guy out, but I feel like having him there, I can do... I, I think I got coverage. I think I've got enough coverage. So there we go. We are set up and ready to go for attack deck number three. And I'm going to show you one thing before I go uh, off the air with this one. At the beginning of turn three, we're going to set up the disguised forward observers, which is very cool, I think. There are three more uh, medic counters. The Germans dressed up as medics and had a hidden forward observer up front that was guiding in, in mortar fire. So as long as those three are up there, and they're only revealed after the first mortar goes off, they're going to get 2d6 for each of their attacks. That's not good. And then once you find that forward observer, you have to shoot him and then you're gonna get him off the board and they won't get that advantage anymore. This one has zero VP, uh, but it's important to get done or those mortars will absolutely destroy you. 
So that's going to go next to the deck, and we'll have to remember that as we play. And I'll show you what the what the medic counters look like. It's pretty cool. So here are the three medic counters, and those are on their hidden uh, hidden sides when you sides when you flip them over. Two of those guys actually are medics. The one guy on the bottom of my hand there is the forward observer, and you got to take him out. So you're going to randomly, you're going to put these down. You're going to kind of, you know, round and round wherever it goes. Nobody where it stops, nobody knows. I don't know where that guy is. Once that first mortar card comes out, I'm going to place them out randomly on the four, or randomly on these four spots, and then they're going to guide in mortar fire and make it way more accurate and way more tough on me. So that's kind of a neat little wrinkle that's added into this game. And I think each one of these volumes has something like that. Uh, but I thought that one was pretty unique and clever. So you can see we are halfway through. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I think I will commence with a uh, turn three here in just a minute. But I do need to take a break. I'm thirsty and uh, want to re regather my thoughts. So think about some, some of my strategy. So thanks for watching. I've been Grant for the Player's Aid.